morning. We welcome all visitors and members of our area faith community to the Church of Our Lady of the Lakes. Fall Festival at St. Mary's in Wilmer is Sunday, September 29th, today, after 9.30 Mass. Fall Festival at Our Lady of the Lakes is Saturday, October 5th, from 8.30 to noon. Please remember in your prayers the soul of Joan Locke, whose funeral will be next week at Watkins. We also remember her daughter, Cindy Torkelson, and their family in prayer. As Catholics, we care deeply about all life and dignity in our state and in our country. How can we make a difference? How can we be informed? The Catholic Advocacy Network makes participation easy by letting us know about legislative developments and provides ready-made key messages and talking points. With a few clicks on your computer or by making a quick phone call, you can communicate your thoughts on important issues directly to your elected officials. There are registration cards by the entrances of the church. Please fill out the card, printing very carefully the information that is requested. Thank you for your prayerful consideration in becoming a member of the network and for becoming a needed and valued voice for life and dignity in Minnesota. God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. So let us now stand and greet the presence of Christ in one another. And now, as we bring new sight to those searching for light, please join us in singing our gathering hymn, number 379, or on the screen, God Has Chosen Me, number 379. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to be here with you again this weekend. Uh, Father Jerry continues to recover. Uh, he's home. Uh, I told him I'd like to, this is the time for me to race him, if he ever wants to have a race. Uh, <laughs> He had knee replacement, as many of you know, and is uh, on the road to recovery. We'll use as our penitential rite the uh, confitier on page four this morning. Um, today we're going to hear a warning in, in the gospel. Jesus warns his disciples, and that includes us, 
not to ignore the needy. Jesus is very clear, very specific. Let us ask God today for the courage to listen to the gospel and the grace to heed it. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, these two people of good will. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasure of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, woe to the complacent in Zion, lying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches. They eat lambs taken from the flock and calves from the stall, improvising to the music of the harp. Like David, they devise their own accompaniment 
They drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the best oils. Yet they are not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. Therefore, now they shall be the first to go into exile, and their wanton revelry shall be done away with. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, man of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were called when you were made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Jesus Christ, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession, to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, there was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. And Abraham replied, my child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to do so, to, to go from our side to yours or your side to ours. He said, well, then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. He said, oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. And then Abraham said, if they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. <clears throat> My friends in Christ, uh, I don't plan to spend a lot of time um, going over this the first part of this parable, the idea, the usual theme of, you know, the disparity between the rich and the poor. Uh, although although I, I do want to spend a little time at that because that is an important piece of it. Um, I don't think I have to tell anyone that most of our economic growth in our country has benefited uh, the wealthiest Americans. I think that's pretty well established. The, the, you know the statistics as well as I. They talk about, you know, the richest 1% of us have nearly as much wealth as the entire 95% or so. And that, that the salary gap between the corporate officers, the, the executive officers and their workers is the greatest of any industrialized country in the world. And that gap seems to be growing. Workers' salaries are at a pretty much of a standstill. They fundamentally have stagnated over the last years. Um, well, you and I, we are we are the, the Dives. Dives is the name we give to the rich man in the parable, even though it doesn't name him there, but tradition has named him Dives. You and I are really the Dives of the world, like it or not. We are the rich people. Um, and the, 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 we, we, it, if we watch the news at all, we see many times these horrifying pictures of uh, the, the emaciated bag of bones people. And, it, and, and from year to year, it just varies what country. 
Now, the, the, the last couple of years, it's been Yemen and Syria. But prior to that, and probably still in many ways, it was Rwanda and Sudan and Bangladesh, and you, we know all those stories if we pay attention to what's happening in the world. So what does that mean? It just means Lazarus still lives. Lazarus still lives, and, and we don't like to admit that. He lives in the estimated uh, 200 million children that are hungry all the time in our world, who are malnourished and starving. And Lazarus lives in the refugees, all those refugees in the world, and the people displaced by, by wars and, and bad governments. And Lazarus lives in the, in the homeless on the streets. We don't see it so much in our areas, but go to any large city and you, you, you notice it pretty quickly. Lazarus lives in, in the convalescent homes where no one visits. And Lazarus lives in the almost one billion really poor people of this globe who are at the, the bottom of the pile. You know. We have all seen pitiable Lazarus at our doorsteps, on our, on our TV screens. And, and, and many times, his, his is an old story, you know, one that brings guilt often to us. And that if you're like me, we try to quickly put it out of mind. You know. Well, all that being said, I'd like to focus on, in a sense, two other issues in this very uncomfortable gospel. Uh, the first is the question, why did the rich man go to hell? He didn't do anything wrong, it seems like. You know, we're told he, acquired, didn't, he didn't acquire his wealth through any unjust means, or uh, we're not told that he, he was responsible for Lazarus's condition or Lazarus's poverty. Uh, we're not told that he committed any crime or evil deed. All we're told is that he, he feasted and he dressed well, as any successful person has a right to do. Why then did he go to hell? And I think the reason may have a lot to do with how we often think of sin. Uh, we often think that we sin only through you know, our, our thought, as we said in the confidier, the, which we started the Mass with today, through our thoughts, words, and deeds. And there's another phrase, of course, which we tend to forget or overlook often, I think. And, and that, that phrase is, we, th we sin through our omissions. We say that right in that prayer at the very beginning. I have sinned in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Yet, though, that's a hard part to remember. And that's what happened, I think, to the rich man. The poor man, Lazarus, was lying at his gate. And the rich man simply seemed to care less. Uh, it was like he was saying, well, that's none of my concern. Uh, I, I mind my own business, other people can mind their business, you know. And then, and then there's that, that door symbolism. Remember how it says, at the, at, lying at his door was a poor man, Lazarus. The door, the image of the door, the gate, the barricade, the barrier, so that one doesn't see the other. You know, um, out of sight, out of mind, we say. You know. 
Well, that is, I think, Diabetes sin. It's kind of a, a moral blindness. Uh, he lives in a social cocoon. Uh, and so according to this parable, the gospel measurement for heaven or hell is seeing spiritual blindness, spiritual indifference is what condemned him and con condemns us. You know? And that's not new. We, we've seen it before dramatically. Remember in, in that gospel of, of, of Matthew, that towards the end of his gospel, in the 25th chapter, we have that story of the end of the, of the world, the end of time and the judgment scene and those on the Lord's right and those on his left. And it's the, 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 the people on his left said, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or a naked or, and, and, and did not take care of you? When, when did that happen? And, and the Lord says, just as you did not do it for one of these, you did not do it for me. The rich man saw Lazarus, hungry, thirsty, stranger, naked, sick, but he chose not to see him, really. You know, he was spiritually blind, and in not seeing, he did not act. And in not acting, he did not show the kind of compassion and sharing that he should have given Lazarus. And so the rich man is condemned for his sin, the sin of omission. It, I think it could come down to what we might call sensitivity, being sensitive uh, to those in need. Um, this parable confronts us not because you and I are so wicked and, and, and wickedly rich and crass and hard-hearted. No, hardly. But because we so often fail to act in a compassionate manner. And it challenges us to open our eyes again to see and then to act. And maybe we have to turn down the noise around us to do that, to kind of pause from the, the, the rat race, you know, to put aside our own preoccupations and notice Lazarus at the door. I think in, that, that other element in this story is, is the question of the five brothers. They, they, they cried out, uh, <coughs> Davy said to Abraham, well, send somebody <laughs> to my brothers so that they don't end up the same way as I did, you know. Uh, tell them to open their eyes. See who's there, like Lazarus. But Abraham says, um, sorry, uh, uh, no can do. There's too big a chasm between us. Uh, and he said, Moses and the prophets told everyone what they must do, and many did, just didn't listen. And he said, well, well maybe if, if it would rise from the dead, you know, that would convince them. Well, we know Jesus did rise from the dead, and still in our own world, in our own lives, um, that just uh, many it just doesn't seem to make a, a lot of difference for a lot of people. You know? So if you want to, uh, in a sense, rescue, if we want to rescue ourselves, our brothers and sisters, our children, our grandchildren, um, I think we have to do it by our example, by our leadership. Uh, and I'm always impressed, when I was here, I was always impressed, and I'm impressed where I am now, with all the people who do that, with the people that go to the homeland, who try to see Lazarus, 
who go to the homeless shelters, who help distribute food, who bring, bring bags of groceries month after month to the local food shelf, or who bundled up their used clothing and give it to the Salvation Army, or the Vincent de Paul Society, or, 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 or volunteer at the hospital or nursing home, or, or help out at Habitat for Humanity, or, or make it possible for their children to go on these mission trips, these mission trips who maybe they aren't helping a huge amount to the people that they, they go and help in different parts of our country, but it awakens us, it awakens them to, to the Lazaruses at the door, you know. And I'm always impressed with the generosity of people who respond to those collections we have for Catholic Relief Services or the Campaign for Human Development, all those ways of, of trying to help others. Um, none of us wish our families to come to a place of torment. Uh, we want them to be uh, successful people, people that are good and caring, sensitive human beings who have learned to see and to respond. And I think that's really what this gospel is saying to us this morning. Open the gate, lower the bridge, notice Lazarus, and then to the best of our ability, uh, do something about him. With Christians throughout our world, let us pray our prayer of faith in the Creed. I, can, I believe in God, in of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, one of the Spirit of the Father, who all things for me. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will be in I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken the gods. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, since the uh, earliest days of the church, it was the duty of the Christian community to pray for those who had special needs, and so we do that now. That the church will remember her calling to be a church to serve the poor. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That a spirit of giving and mutual support may spread throughout our culture and the entire world. We pray. Lord, that people living in our materialistic culture will find spiritual fulfillment and true joy in serving Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the upcoming fall festival at Our Lady of the Lakes and the festival at St. Mary's 
today will provide a time for renewing friendships and creating new ones. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For continued recovery of all who have had surgery, especially Father Jerry, that all who have died, especially Joan Locke, mother of Cindy Torkelson, and all who grieve their loss and are comforted by God's goodness, we pray. Lord, that as people of Christ, we seek justice for the oppressed and for the intentions written in our book of prayer requests. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you sent us your son Jesus to establish your kingdom. Grant us what we need to choose to live as members of that kingdom and to live out your gospel message here on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song during the preparation of the gifts will be They'll Know We Are Christians, number 582 in the songbook. 582. <laughs>
Brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. God, accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Accept, O oh Lord, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed human beings in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all of its wonder. And forever we praise you in your mighty works through Jesus Christ. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loves the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks, and then gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be offered for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, 
whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your presence and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. As we gather around this table of the Lord, let us pray the table prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we beg you, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our day, and in your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all, protect us uh, from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your disciples, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us share with one another a sign of that peace.
This is Jesus, who gives light to our eyes so that we might see the Lazarus at our door. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we to be called to his table. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Our song during communion will be, We Are Many Parts, number 583 in the songbook, 583. i 
Let us pray. Lord, send us forth with eyes to see, to see the poor and the needy at our door. Send us forth with hands to help, hands held out to others whose flesh is our flesh. Make us a compassionate people. Keep us from any bondage to money or greed. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Well, thank you very much for coming out to celebrate with us here this morning. Our song for going forth is City of God, number 385 in the songbook 385. Now let's join our voices together to conclude our celebration. Mm -hmm. 